everyone! It's King of Kids time again! It's great to be able to talk to you. I wonder how you are today. Um, I'd like to read you something that I read in the Bible, which I think is really great. So it's in the New Testament in a book called Hebrews, which is a letter to some of God's friends. Um, and if you've got a Bible, you could look it up. If you look in Hebrews chapter 11, right at the beginning in verse 1, it says this. Faith means being sure of the things that we hope for. And faith means knowing that something is real, even if we don't see it. That's interesting, isn't it? So that is what faith means. Faith means being sure of the things that you're hoping for and knowing that something is real, even if you can't see it. So then in this chapter of Hebrews, there's a long list of all the people who had faith in God. They believed in him, even though they couldn't see him. They trusted that he was going to help them. So it talks about Noah and all the things that he did, and Abraham, and Isaac, and Moses. We know about Moses, don't we? And how God was watching his people and loving them. Um, and it says that Moses had faith and he had to trust in God, even though he couldn't see him. And then in chapter 12 of Hebrews, it says, So we have many people of faith around us. Their lives tell us what faith means. So let's run the race that's before us and never give up. Hmm. I wonder what that means. Um, I don't have a race in front of me. I've got nowhere I need to run to. Have you got anywhere you're going to run to? Are you in a race? Maybe you're doing the race for life. That's a really great thing to do. Well done if you are. Um, but I don't think that's what the Bible is talking about, do you? Let me read it again. Let's run the race that's before us and never give up. I think this is talking about our lives. And I think the Bible is saying that our lives are like a race. We need to keep going and never give up in our lives. Somebody who kept going and never gave up was a man called Daniel. And you can read about him in the Bible. There's a whole book called Daniel. And it has the story of all the things that happened to him. Amazing things. It would be great to read them. We don't have time for them all today. We have time for one thing that happened to Daniel. And everybody at Christ the Rock is thinking about this one thing that happened to Daniel. It's our story for this week. So before we think about this story, you need to know that Daniel was a very important man. He had been working hard all his life and God had been helping him with his job. He'd been working so hard and God had been helping him so much that he had the top job in the kingdom. He worked for the king. So the only person who was more important than Daniel was the king. The king's name was Darius. So Daniel worked for King Darius and he worked for very hard at his job. But do you know that sometimes when you work very hard and you're good at something, people don't like you. This happened to Daniel. He was a really good man. He was kind to everybody, but some people decided they didn't like him. Maybe they were jealous of him. And they didn't like him so much they wanted to get him. And they watched him to find a way that they could catch him. And they watched him. And they watched him. But all he did was good stuff. So they thought, what are we going to do to catch Daniel out? And they found by watching him that he prayed every day. He prayed every morning. And he prayed every lunchtime. And he prayed every evening. And he talked to God about everything. He asked God to help him. 
He thanked God for all the good stuff. He just kept talking to God. And so the bad people thought, aha, we have a way we can catch Daniel out. And so they went to the king and they said, oh, dear king, you're so wonderful and you're so great. And we think you should make a new law. And we think you should make a new law that says that nobody is allowed to talk to God. And the king said, OK. And so the king wrote out a new law that said that nobody was allowed to talk to God. And if anybody talked to God, they would be thrown in with the lions. And the lions were kept in a big, big pit, like a hole in the ground that was called the lion's den. It was the place where they lived. So this rule was sent out throughout the land. And Daniel must have thought to himself, what am I going to do? Talking to God is so important. So in the morning, Daniel prayed and he said, please, God, help me. I really need your help this time. And at lunchtime, he prayed and he said, thank you, God, that you have always helped me. Please keep helping me. And then in the evening, he said, thank you, God, you've helped me all day today. Please keep helping me tomorrow. And the bad people were watching and they said, yes, we've caught Daniel. He's broken a law at last. So they ran to the king and they said, oh, king, you're so wonderful and you're so great. Something terrible has happened. We have seen your friend Daniel praying. He's been talking to God. So you know what we have to do, king? We have to throw him to the lions. And the king was so sad because Daniel was his best helper. But the king had to throw Daniel in with the lions. This story has been made into a book and it was written by Bob Hartman and illustrated by Tim Raglin. And I'm going to read it to you. So are you sitting comfortably? Let's find out what happened to Daniel. King Darius did not want to throw his friend Daniel to the lions. But Daniel's enemies had tricked the king into making a new law. Can you see the enemies? Here they are, look. The enemies. And can you see the king? He looks very sad, doesn't he, about what's about to happen. Daniel had broken the law by praying to his God. When Daniel was thrown into the lion's den, he prayed another prayer. And then he waited for God to send an answer. There were four lions in the lion's den. A father lion, a mother lion, and two tumbling lion cubs. The lions looked at Daniel and drooled. Their tummies growled like only lion tummies can. He's skinny and scrawny and old, said Father Lion. He'll be tough but tasty, said the Mother Lion. They'll be scrummy drumsticks said the lion cubs. Suddenly, something like a curtain opened up between heaven and earth. God had heard Daniel's prayer and God's answer had arrived. <laughs> God's answer was an angel, a great big angel who was good with lions. It's not time for you to eat yet, said the angel. Oh, growled Father Lion. Then what time is it, Mr. Angel? 
The angel smiled. It's scratching time, he said. First the angel scratched behind Father Lion's ears. Do you think he's enjoying that? <laughs> I think he is. And then he scratched Mother Lion. And last of all, he tickled the tumbling lion cubs. <laughs> and those chunky fingers felt so good that the lions forgot all about Daniel. But then one of the lion's tummies growled again. Father Lion glared at Daniel and drawled. What time is it now, Mr. Lion? The angel answered quickly, It's belly rubbing time, of course. Me first, said the cub. You were first last time, complained the other. Everyone will have a turn, said the angel. And the next minute, all the lions were on the floor, wrestling and belly rubbing and playing lion games. And that big angel was playing hardest of them all. At last, the lions collapsed on the floor of the den. Father Lion yawned. <sighs> what time is it now, Mr. Angel? It's sleeping time. The angel yawned too. So the lions curled up like house cats in front of a fire. And soon they were fast asleep. The next morning King Darius called down into the den. Daniel, Daniel, are you alive Daniel? Has your God answered your prayers? Yes your majesty, Daniel called back. He sent an angel to shut the lion's mouths. King Darius was delighted. He told his servants to pull Daniel up out of the den. And then he told them to put Aunt Daniel's enemies down there in his place. The lions stood up and stared at Daniel's enemies. Now the lions were wide awake and they were hungry. Goodbye, said the angel, as he pulled aside the curtain between heaven and earth. It's time for me to go. Wait, called Father Lion. I have just one more question. What time is it now, Mr. Angel? The angel looked at Daniel's enemies. He grinned a wide cat grin and said, What time is it now? It's dinner time. I wonder what you think about that story of Daniel. I wonder what you would have done if you were Daniel and a new law was made that we aren't allowed to talk to God anymore. That would be really hard, wouldn't it? I wonder what you would do. Hmm. God was with Daniel and he really helped him, didn't he? I hope you know that God is with you all the time and he is ready to help you with all the hard things you will ever have to do for your whole life. Any difficult stuff, he will be there with you. And you can talk to him and you can ask him to help. I have done that so many times. So many times I've had to say, please God help me. Sometimes I've had to say it in my head because I'm surrounded by people and I've said in my head, please God help me. And God has never let me down. He has helped me with all of the really hard things and he will be there for you too. Have a really fab week and I will see you soon. Bye bye.